Don't miss Clownfish Studios' latest crowdfunder, Crimson Wren Volume 1 on Kickstarter and Indiegogo. Thaddeus Wendell's greatest treasure is out there, and it's up to young mage Crimson Wren and the crew of a rundown airship called the True North to find it. But will they find it in time? Crimson Wren of the True North is a race against the clock filled with action, adventure, comedy, and heart. This is a brand new manga-style graphic novel from Clownfish Studios. Go to crimsonwren.com or check it out on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. It ends on November 18th. That's November 18th. And now on with the video. Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, not here with Geeky Sparkles in this video, but we're gonna talk about The Last Jedi and why the media can't quit The Last Jedi. Why are we still talking about The Last Jedi? I have some, I have some theories, because clearly The Last Jedi is not as popular with Star Wars fans as a Disney and Lucasfilm would have hoped. Uh, I did this video last week, went to an Ollie's where we have literally like hundreds of Ray Skywalker action figures or Ray pre pre Skywalker from the force awakens and the last Jedi just rotting on the shelves, right? Uh, the last Jedi has been a very polarizing movie to say the least, but uh, most star Wars fans have moved on. They just kind of, uh, you know, felt that the Disney sequel trilogy was a complete bust. It was time to move on whether it's to other franchises or just, you know, or uh, just cherry picking what they want from the franchise going forward. But we're going to talk about how even today there are more articles talking about The Last Jedi. You don't see as many articles, nearly as many articles talking about The Force Awakens, uh, talking about the rise of Skywalker. And uh, I have I have a theory. I have a theory for that. So before we get into it any further, Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, over 280, almost 281,000 subs. Thank you so much for the support. We do talk about pop culture, talk about Disney, talk about Star Wars. We kind of started out talking about the drama around franchises like The Last Jedi and fan backlash. And uh, I never thought we'd still be talking about this damn movie five years later. Five years later, we'll, we're still talking about The Last Jedi. Uh, every day, pretty much, there's another article uh, in the news cycle from one of these pop culture news outlets uh, putting The Last Jedi in the headline. And I think what is potentially going on here um, <laughs> is that some of these articles are actually being written by AI, partially by AI. And I'm not talking about the authors. I'm not saying, hey, the authors are... Uh, you know, robots or anything like that. What I'm saying is that in a lot of cases, a lot of these bigger websites, especially Valnet owned websites, as I understand it, they have keywords that they're looking for. They're assigning stories to writers using heavily trafficked terms. And The Last Jedi is a very, uh, a very polarizing movie. People still search for stuff on it. Apparently it still gets hits. And I think the hotter the take, uh, the more traffic these websites get, whether or not they actually believe it uh, is another case. I, I really am starting to feel that most of these uh, writers working for these websites don't have a strong opinion about The Last Jedi. Not like, not like it was when this whole thing first started, where if you didn't like The Last Jedi, you were like a literal Nazi or, you know, alt-right or whatever else garbage they were trying to tell tell people they were right i think at this point it's basically uh become you know kind of like we talked about you know gamergate on video game sites like this thing is so far in the rearview mirror that the general public doesn't care but they're going to try to get you to care about it again because they're trying to wind the clock back to when they got a lot of traffic and and these websites regardless of how you feel about the movie they made a ton of money, a ton of money in 2017, 2018, dunking on Star Wars fans. And, uh, you know, then we had YouTube uh, people reacting to those articles. And then they write more articles about the YouTube people. You know what I'm saying? It became this, uh, this cycle, kind of like the, uh, the Trump outrage train. And, you know, the, uh, the ad revenue is running out. I've been talking about this before. And I think that's really what this is 
coming down to, but we're also starting to see some articles that uh, indicate that the media realizes The Last Jedi was a colossal mistake, that it absolutely did damage the franchise, and that um, you know a lot of people are just moving on. They're moving on, and Lucasfilm doesn't know how to move on. So let's let's talk about that, right? So what kicked this off was this article, Lucasfilm's reaction to Star Wars, The Last Jedi, continues to rear its ugly head. Uh, this is coming from comic book resources of all places, a Valnet site, by the way. Star Wars is in a rut when it comes to getting new movies made, and it may be the backlash to The Last Jedi that scared off creativity. And we've talked about this. Uh, supposedly, Lucasfilm doesn't know what to do. They're saying that the backlash to The Last Jedi has uh, kind of paralyzed them. They don't know which way to go. And really, it's not that hard. I mean, just look at the stuff that has had a positive fan reaction. You know, look at the first season of The Mandalorian uh, prior to them, you know, getting rid of Gina Carano. Look at the reaction to OG Luke Skywalker coming back at the end of the second season of Mandalorian. Um, look at the backlash for shows like Boba Fett, where you've got Boba Fett and he's not Boba Fett. It's not hard to get right. I don't know why they think it takes a rocket scientist uh, to to get Star Wars right. I mean, even, you know, Galaxy's Edge and the Galactic Star Cruiser. Um, both were failures at first. I don't know how the Galactic Star Cruiser is going to pan out, but I think you can trace a lot of that back to deliberately going in another direction when the fans have spoken as to what they actually want. Look at what gets funded on HasLab versus what doesn't get funded on ha HasLab. Now, I mean, it could be argued that Star Wars is like perpetually stuck in a time capsule. Uh, and I don't think that's really the case. I mean, fans have been very receptive to the expanded universe. But again, you know, Disney thought they knew better and immediately discarded the expanded universe. And now they're going back and, and cherry picking characters and concepts from it because they don't know what else to do. Um, so, yeah. CBR, once a science fiction film juggernaut, Star Wars is having a bit of a rough go when it comes to restarting its engines. They're admitting it. Lacking a theatrical release since The Rise of Skywalker, the series has instead become an endless cycle of TV shows. This likely stems from the misguided response to The Rise of Skywalker's predecessor. No, they broke Star Wars. They basically broke Star Wars. They kind of fixed it with The Mandalorian, and now they're going back and breaking it with Boba Fett and Obi-Wan. And uh, Now, I've heard Andor is actually pretty good. I've heard from multiple people. I have not had time to watch it. I'm still trying to work my way through the Orville, but uh, I, will, I will check it out when I get a chance, guys. It's, i got a lot of things. I do a lot of things. I have literally, I have one to two hours of downtime maybe spread out throughout the day with everything else that we run, the other businesses that we run, uh, you know, and all that, the stuff we're working on behind the scenes that you're not seeing. I have maybe one to two hours of free time per day. If I'm lucky, if I'm lucky. So anyway, ever since the controversy of the last Jedi, the star Wars films have been in planning disarray. Numerous directors have come along and announced upcoming films only for none of them to materialize. Uh, filmmakers are running for the Hills left and right. And it could stem from a less than creative playing field currently engrossing the franchise. I think it's also Bob Chapek, you know, how does he explain to the board of directors, some of whom might be star Wars fans um, and be like, Hey guys. Yeah. I know we paid $4 billion for this franchise and, but it's never been in a worse place. I mean, despite all the backlash to the prequels, the clone war still did really well. And there never was a time that you saw you know, this many Star Wars figures on the shelves this long after the movie has been released, that they're just sitting there. They can't give them away between this and the Rose Ticos and, uh, you know, the Snokes. And, and it's just nobody wants these damn action figures. And, you know, people are going to say, well, the Phantom Menace, when when the Phantom Menace was out, there were a lot of Jar Jar Binks. I'm like, yeah, but they weren't sitting there two, three, four, five years after the fact. They cleared them out. Um, and there weren't a ton of them. I don't remember rows and rows and rows of Jar Jars. I remember there being more than the other characters, but they cleared them out and they moved on. And then they moved on into Attack of the Clones. So before the release of the controversial Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi, again, we got to get those keywords in there. 
Uh, Ryan Johnson was supposedly promised his own trilogy of Star Wars movies. Turned out that it did turn out to be true, but then there have been no new movies. And Taika Waititi didn't get a movie. Nobody got a movie. Uh, they said The Last Jedi broke Star Wars creative potential. Uh, though the film's merits are hotly debated, either side of the conversation around The Last Jedi can agree it fundamentally scarred the franchise. Are they actually admitting it? They're actually admitting it. One overlooked example of this is that directors are no, now no longer willing to even be able to take Star Wars movies in a new direction. Uh, this, the decisions made in The Last Jedi were so contentious that it perhaps made Lucasfilm cautious of doing anything similar. Please explain Boba Fett. <laughs> you know, please explain why Obi-Wan was uh, trying to save Princess Leia and not Luke Skywalker, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It just, it, it's, it's a cluster. The studio may seek to play things safely on the big screen and get back to the fundamentals of what made audiences fall in love with Star Wars, which is what they should have done from the beginning. I mean, I'm sorry, The, the Last Jedi, the middle of a poorly planned trilogy or not planned trilogy was not the place to uh, take creative liberties, you know, especially not with an iconic character like Luke Skywalker. I mean, clearly they had no plan. They're just like, yep, we're going to make three more movies. Do we have a story, a logical continuation of the original uh, trilogy? Uh, yeah, George gave us a draft, but we threw it out <laughs> for reasons. They're talking about Sean Levy making a Star Wars film. I doubt, I doubt any of these are going to get off the ground. Uh, why is Disney trying to play it safe with Star Wars movies? Uh, another, similar, another situation similar to that of The Last Jedi could be a death knell on Star Wars, especially since it's undeniable that the franchise isn't nearly the merchandising or pop culture juggernaut it once was. It's not. It's not. Look at this. This is all photoshopped. I literally had some moron on Twitter tell me that I photoshopped all those Ray action figures. Unironically, like they're like, oh my God, that's just, that's, that's some fandom menace grifter just photoshopping Ray on the pegs to make it look like she's not very popular. When we all know here on Twitter how popular Ray actually is. It's like, come the hell on. Uh, with the company trying to gently guide Star Wars back in the theater, use a lot of lube. It's questionable as to what type of content it's trying to avoid. The kind of content that doesn't make bank. And uh, at this point, Star Wars has been such a, mix, uh, a mixed bag that um, I don't even have a solution. I mean, honestly, the best way to save Star Wars, I think, at this point is to just stop making Star Wars and just be like, we had... Uh, Three great movies, well, two, two and a half great movies, a half of a good movie, three pretty okay, not as bad as people make them, make them out to be movies. We had Rogue One, uh, we had The Mandalorian, and you know what, let's just, let's just call it a day. I mean, I can tell you my own personal feeling, and this is just my feeling, uh, I, I'm over Star Wars, at least Star Wars under Disney. I have no desire to watch any more Star Wars. I don't have any interest in Star Wars. I can't even go back and watch the original trilogy at this point because I know where these character stories go and how poorly they are treated and the retcons and the drama, mostly the drama from Lucasfilm, Lucasfilm employees, Lucasfilm adjacent people. I just have no interest in Star Wars whatsoever and clearly a lot of other people don't have interest in Star Wars and clearly the media has caught on that Star Wars is broken and you can blame The Last Jedi. Finally, it just took them five years to get here. But again, I think it has more to do with the algorithm and they're trying to roll this back to in the time when they were getting lots and lots of uh, rage click, rage bait uh, traffic, right? So I'm going to wrap this up. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views and rants, guys. We'll talk later.